Oh, wow. Talk about an original idea. Talking about a 3D platformer. It's not like I haven't done that before. But and all joking aside, I'm actually okay about talking about this platformer. Mostly because I have a lot of nostalgia for Croc. If you're familiar with the Croc series, you would probably know that Croc was originally an early concept for a 3D platformer based off Yoshi for the N64, made possible by Argonaut Studios, the company responsible for the Sun FX chip in the NES cartridges making 3D imagery, which led to a collaboration with Nintendo and the creation of Star Fox, and the thought-to-be-lost Star Fox 2. The game was also used in other games like Stunt FX Racing and Yoshi's Island. Though Nintendo turned down their offer to make a 3D Yoshi game, and whether it was due to pure inspiration or spite, Argonaut decided to make their game into a reality, which came the series that I know and love, Croc. So for the love of the franchise, and a poll I made for what franchise you should look at next this year, I'll be looking at all the official Croc games out there. The only exception would be the phone games, as I generally have no way to actually play those games, and I'm not entirely sure if they're lost media or not. We're a bit of the game than the, well, beginning, as it's time to rock out with our crock out. Was that really the best joke I could think of? Oh, this really takes me back when I used to play this as a kid at my daycare. Growing up, I didn't really grow up with a lot of consoles, and a lot of the games I usually got to experience through second hand. But when given the opportunity, I was always loved to come back to Croc Legend of the Gobos, a simple 3D platformer that may not be the best 3D platformer out there, but what it tries to do is, well, passable. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to explain why. You play as a little crocodile named Croc who's found as a baby in a basket, and raised by the mystical furry little guys known as Gobos. And things were pretty peaceful, until the mean and green Baron Dante invaded Gobo Valley and kidnapped all of the Gobos. Croc escapes thanks to the king, and it's up to you to rescue the Gobos and save the day. Depending on how well you can actually maneuver Croc, as Croc is not really what you call the most mobile 3D platformer. Croc doesn't have the greatest when it comes to movement controls, as Croc was a game that used take controls, making you not really move Croc, but drive Croc. He also had two different modes of combat. His spin attack, that comes with cute little PlayStation mascot sound effects, used by pressing the square button, and a foot stop that's actually pretty useful for crowd control and breaking boxes, and is used by pressing X to jump and then X again in the air. Though if you do hold the X button, Croc will actually slam down quicker. Unfortunately, there really isn't much for camera control, as all you really do is just press L1 and R1 to adjust the view of the camera, but this leads to one of Croc's biggest problems, as it can be really hard to grasp where you want the camera to go, as you have generally no real control over the camera. Also, there's a shuffle button. Gameplay-wise, Croc is a linear 3D platformer that came out a year after Super Mario 64. Though obviously I won't compare the two, as many companies were trying to figure out how to make 3D platformers at the time. Nintendo just happened to get it right on the first try. Though moving Croc isn't as nimble as moving Mario around, the game knows this and makes sure the game is built for Croc's gameplay. The levels can get hard, but it is still possible to beat it. Not to mention, the game's soundtrack gives you a relaxing vibe when you're handling the levels in the game, as Croc actually has some of my favorite soundtracks in gaming, just for how relaxing and upbeat they feel. navigate through the linear level design, there'll be a lot of different collectible items you can obtain through the game. One of the main collectibles, obviously, is Gobos, with there being around six per level, excluding boss levels. Though you can collect up to max F5 while traversing the level, while navigating through the levels you'll also find gems, and gems work just like rings in the Sonic series, as collecting a gem will actually protect you from damage. If you get hit, you'll actually lose all your gems you've collected. 
but if you manage to reach the end of the level with a certain amount of gems, it'll actually stockpile them until you reach over 100 and get an extra life. Just know the counter resets if you get a game over or if you restart the game. Some gems will also hide a rainbow gem. With each level having five different colored rainbow gems, hidden around the stage or even within gems in general. If you collect all five, you'll actually enter a bonus level where you can get the sixth gobo. Some of these will just be simple platforming missions, a simple guessing game, or the worst game of whack a sheep, where if you fail, you have to restart the entire level and collect the rainbow gems again. The game also has two different types of saving systems, one that uses a memory card and another that uses a password system. And trust me when I say, the game has a complicated password system, and it only uses four buttons. But if you press the right combination, or just look at the cheat codes online, you can actually reach the very end of the game, no sweat. Though there is one glaring problem I have with Croc, and it's a two-part issue. The first part is how health is handled with the gems. It isn't much of a fuss if you know what you're doing, and areas usually have a gem or more for you to collect. But gems disappear far too easily, leading me to try my best to collect as many as I can using Croc's movement, which is the only time I generally have an issue with the game. And the second part of this issue is on how boss battles are handled. Not all boss fights are bad, with the first and final boss being pretty decent, but there are some bosses with bad hitboxes that it becomes really frustrating having to handle them. The best example is Neptuna, who's a boss you have to fight underwater. Though I think the water levels are alright for the time, the problem is handling the combat, especially with this boss fight, as it makes Neptuna one of the worst bosses in the game, especially when you have no gems, as after you run out of gems and die, when you respawn in the same room, you get zero gems, meaning if you want to beat Neptuna, you have only one shot to do it, and with how he was designed, where his hitbox will either make you think you didn't hit him, or take damage, meaning you have to fight him all over again until you succeed or get a game over. But I did it. I beat Baron Dante, saved King Gobo, and Croc got a statue. I also know there's a secret world with secret levels and a secret boss, but I decided to exclude it from this review mostly due to the game's controls and how much difficult the game ramps up near the end. So if you want to experience that for yourself, either play the game, get all the Gobos, find the secret puzzle pieces, and beat it yourself, or look the password up online and achieve nothing. Croc Legend of the Gobos, in my personal opinion, has aged kind of poorly in my opinion. The tank controls make the game at times hard to control, but the game is still possible to be if you put the time in it. Though I am curious what the HD remaster will change within the gameplay, whether they keep the tank controls or improve Croc's mobility, just like how they did in the sequel. <laughs> With how successful Croc was, it makes sense that there will be a Croc 2. On a faraway island, a gobo with glasses witnesses Dantini's resurrecting Baron Dante and plans on getting revenge against Croc. Speaking of, Croc and his gobo family are relaxing at the beach and find a message in a bottle, and turns out it's a potential letter from Croc's family trying to find their missing child. So Croc goes from island to island trying to find his parents while trying to solve all the other gobo's problems and Croc doesn't seem to realize that Baron Dante has returned until near the end of the game. Croc 2, like its previous title, has Croc navigate levels, collecting gems, and reaching the end of the level. Sometimes. But there are some levels with a specific goal, whether it be rescuing gobos from Dantinis, finding treasure, or beating up a bird for a sandwich. And the level design somehow is more frustrating than it was in the first game. And it's all because of how they handled the controls this time around. Croc no longer has tank controls and moves faster than before, but what they improved upon in the sequel added brand new issues that weren't in the previous game before, such as the removal of the flip move, meaning if you want to turn around, you have to hold down the, well, down button, and to make sure that Croc doesn't fall off the platform. One of the major issues I have with the Croc games as a whole is how he turns in the game not how he maneuvers. I don't know why, but I feel like Croc's turning is even slower in this game than it is in the original. And it even makes getting collectibles a chore. Though gems are no longer used for health, you can only collect up to 100 gems per level, 
and can be used as currency at Pete's shop. At Pete's shop, you can buy a few items within the store, which unfortunately have a one-time use, meaning that you'll have to use it again once when you go back to his shop. As Croc 2 suffers from backtracking, as store items are actually used for the following. For one, you can get bonus hearts, will actually give you extra HP, and luckily that does stay with you permanently. There's also the little toy Gobo, which you can control, but he is very slippery to use. And lastly are the three types of gummy pads. And no, they're not like those little jello things from the first game. These are actually the gummy candies. As for some reason, Croc 2 had a cross promotion with the candy company, and Croc uses them as an optional platformer, which is unfortunately only useful when you have to go backtracking to certain levels in order to obtain all five rainbow gems. You can find some around the level, but there will be one or two hidden in the hard reach areas unless you have those specific items. But by collecting all the rainbow gems and reaching the level, and possibly collecting 100 regular gems, you obtain the Golden Gobo. And once when you obtain enough Golden Gobos, you'll gain access to one of the world's bonus levels and obtain the Jigsaw piece. And considering I didn't bother getting them in the previous game, I definitely knew I wasn't planning on getting them here either. Because I really don't like Croc 2's game design. For one thing, gongs are sometimes the end goal of the game, but not all the time. As now, the gongs are used as checkpoints instead of respawning in the same room like in the previous game. But the game puts so few checkpoints around. Luckily, this means lava or bottomless pits aren't as bad as you only lose a heart. But lack of checkpoints make it tough for you as you're hoping you have enough HP to make it to the next checkpoint and you realize the amount of hearts doesn't change no matter how many checkpoints you find. As the game is really strict on giving you hearts in the game. And the reason for that may be due to the game's poor level design along with its controls. But one of the worst design mechanics in this game is swinging from vines. It is downright horrible to handle and I have had the hardest time trying to execute it perfectly. They're even more annoying when they're near bottomless pits or lava. Meaning if you fall due to a poorly timed jump, you lose a heart and go all the way back to the furthest checkpoint. Also, don't be fooled by the HP meter. That's actually your live counter. Meaning once when you run out of hearts, you have to start the level all over again from the very beginning of the level of choice. And after you get a game over, no matter how many hearts you already have, you'll automatically still only have three lives. So even when you offer up some gems, get a brand new heart container, you won't get very far in this game where you constantly game over, over and over again, having to navigate through frustrating platforming just to try to beat a specific chunk of the game due to multitudes of BS game design. And unfortunately, I had to do something very drastic. I unfortunately gave myself unlimited lives. Don't judge me. There are some levels that are just downright unfair due to the live system. And I knew if I wanted to get through this entire game, I had to get rid of the life counter. But after finally navigating through three and a half worlds, I get the rematch of a lifetime against Baron Dante, go through a very confusing maze with puzzles I honestly didn't get at first, and a pretty decent final boss, in all honesty. Croc finally reunites with his family. Well, more specifically his mom. Apparently it looks like his dad doesn't really care. And also, Baron Dante tries to steal a crocodile egg, leading to a possible Croc 3, which unfortunately never happened. And that might be a good thing, because Croc 2 tries to improve what made the original game good, but somehow makes the game worse, making the game harder to control and more aggravating to get through. If they got rid of the live system, turn the hearts into actual health, be more forgiving with its checkpoints, and find a perfect balance of Croc 1's original gameplay or tweak it enough where it was easily controllable, there could be an excellent sequel here. But unfortunately, there really isn't. And with the rumors of a potential HD remaster of Legend of the Gobos, unfortunately this is one of those sequels that doesn't live up to the hype. And usually a lot of people would think this is where the games end. But what some people actually don't know about the Croc series is, besides the mobile games, Croc also was on handheld. Twice. Croc, Legend of the Gobos. For PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and Windows 95. What is this? It's kind of ironic to think that Croc, 
character who was based off Yoshi would be on a console made by the company that created the dinosaur. Unfortunately, the only games that he would be able to compete with a dinosaur with were Yoshi Cookie and Yoshi, two completely different puzzle games. So Croc wins by a technicality. Unfortunately, I can't really say much about the gameplay. As it is, Croc won, same as the first, but unfortunately worse. But considering that Argonaut actually had no involvement in the development of this game, instead the game was developed by VirtuCraft, who not only have a small library of games, but this is their only platformer. Croc can still move left and right, jump, spin, and do his foot stomp. And obviously beyond smaller hardware, it's still weird to think that this is the only 2D platformer on the franchise. And just like his inspiration from Sonic with the Gems, unfortunately there is a reason why Sonic wasn't available on the Game Boy. Well, besides the obvious reason. And that reason being is that Croc's momentum leads you into also running into something that you weren't supposed to or fall in a bottomless pit, and these appear right after the third level of the game. Though I will say the gem system is a lot more better than it is in either games, as you only lose a small handful of gems compared to all of them in the first game. Unfortunately, this is still early handheld hardware. Though some games do have built-in save systems, Croc unfortunately isn't one of them. Croc on Game Boy Color is a passable platformer, but the issues show themselves real early, and it's not really worth looking out for, especially considering how short the game is. At least there's only one more game left in the series, and I really hope it's good. Okay, I don't really have a transition for this one, so here's an image of Croc at a game expo. Ouch! That's pretty interesting, ain't it? Speaking of interesting... With there being a handheld version of Croc 1, it makes sense that there be a handheld version of Croc 2. And just like the handheld version, both games are entirely different. Sure, the plot is the same as the console version, except compared to the Croc 1 Game Boy version, there's actually a cutscene for the story mode. But this time around, Croc 2 is actually a top-down adventure game similar to The Legend of Zelda. But unlike its console counterpart, the game is actually good. The game actually feels fair to players, as the game follows Legend of the Gobos level structure as when you die in a specific area, you respawn at the entrance of the spot. And HP actually works like HP, making the game not as troublesome to navigate through, even though I still think the game should have a map layout. But then again, I am probably really hard to please. Croc can still of course walk around the arena and do a spin and foot stomp, but if you double tap on the D-pad in the direction you're going, Croc can actually start running around the stage. And if you press the jump button, he'll actually do a spinning jump that'll actually give him more distance, and that might have to do with the fact that the game was developed by Natsume and published by THQ. Before Natsume were known for making the worst adaptations of Harvest Moon, mostly due to legal issues that are fairly complicated to explain, but long story short, Story of Seasons is the real Harvest Moon, and the Harvest Moon games now are just terrible. And honestly, I don't really need to talk about THQ. If you played any games with the THQ symbol on them, you know there at least is some quality. And this is my general opinion the best way to play Croc 2. I'll generally admit I didn't beat all the Game Boy Color games, but I really enjoyed what I played with Croc 2. My only real issue with the game is that sometimes Croc's jumps can be a bit too precise, causing me to lose a life to a bottomless pit, but I respawned in the same area so I can actually try again without any issue, unless I get a game over and have to start the level all over again. Besides that, to get the true ending, you have to collect every single Golden Gobo and then beat the final boss. But considering I wasn't annoyed by the game's level design this time around, I may go for it sometime in the future. I may even stream it on Twitch. It's kind of funny to think that the best version of Croc 2 is actually the handheld version. Heck, it might even be the best Croc game in the series. Though I would still recommend you try Croc 1, Croc 2 on Game Boy Color is without a doubt the best version. And yeah. That's literally every Croc game I can get my hands on. And looking back at this series after a very long time, I'm kind of sad to say that the games are a mixed bag when it comes to quality. I kind of wish I can look at this franchise with more love, but if I take off the nostalgia glasses, Croc as a game series is kind of a mixed bag. If you want to experience these games for yourself, I still recommend Legend of the Gobos on PlayStation 1 and Croc 2 on the Game Boy Color. You could also try Croc on Game Boy Color 2, and I will never recommend Croc 2. At least not yet. This is still mostly a rumor, but I've heard talks of an HD remake of Legend of the Gobos, keeping the game as faithful to the original as best as they can, and hopefully improving upon what doesn't really work in those games. Whether Croc 2 will be a part of that remaster is still up in the air, I really hope it fixes the major issues I have with game mechanics. 
or they could just always port the Game Boy Color version. There are still a lot of interesting things I find interesting about the Croc games as a whole, as the series just has a lot of interesting development. But I still can't help but love this little guy. Whether it was the unique history behind his development, whether or not he may or may not have inspired 3D platformers like Mario 64, I'll never forget the memories I made thanks to this little crocodile, even though his franchise is fairly flawed. What's also strange is that every time I make a video on a forgotten franchise, a remake or a continuation seems to happen not long after. Eh, it's probably a coincidence. Or is it? Ah, <sighs> finally, after finishing that croc retrospective, I can finally work on that Resident Evil Halloween video. Wait, this is my normal backdrop? What's going on here? I think I have some explaining to do.